to the comic shop I'll let you read about Cyclops I'll have you spending all you got Trump Space Force is looking hot Damn Leo Hola, Tannerinos. Big Legit back in the house, ready to talk about more amazing comics from when? The 20th century, as per usual, the early 1990s. And what do these comics do? They teach us what it takes for a comic book to move the needle. That is correct. Now, you will recall a few weeks back, I, uh, I did this little gem right here called X-Men 2099 number one, and I had a delightful time reading it. I did not think I was going to enjoy it at all, but I did. And that is a, a thanks to the work of one incredible artist named Ron Lim, who this cover does not do his work justice. Also, the writing from John Francis Moore in this comic book is absolutely stellar. So basically, it started, if you recall, with Tim Fitzgerald here, coming to this uh, Nuevo Sol at the edge of the Las Vegas desert, and he goes in, and there's this dude, Junk Pile, who lets him in. This card that was given to him by a girl named Shakti. And he comes in, and it's just like this party going on, like, you know, like they do in The Matrix. And uh, he meets this cool chick named Serpentine who has this dorky power, like Reed Richards. Meets this totally awesome dude who can basically, he's kind of like the absorbing man, whatever metal he touches, his body turns into. This is, you know, my, maybe my favorite character in the book. I have a couple that I really am enjoying. And so ultimately, that's Shakti. And so ultimately, you know, like, they set up the, the bad guy who is uh, Mr. Singe. And they set up the ultimate good guy who is Zion. Zion has like this freaky power, like he's got the lizard hand and anything he touches, it changes the molecular structure of it and basically disintegrates it. And so sure enough, you know, and we've got the degenerate drug addict son of Singe, Lighten Singe, and this is the sexy daughter Desdemona Singe. And keep going, keep going, you know, this is Bloodhawk, he's gonna switch into Bloodhawk. Oh, Spidey 2099, Ravage with the devil horns, this is not in Ravage number two or number three. Why he has these devil horns growing out of his head, we don't know. Oh, I do know. Oh, you remember that last video where I talked Ravage, Ravage 2099 number two and three. Oh, he's going to get some sort of Mutroid power. Ha, ha, ha. This is going to be him with the Mutroid power. I can tell already. Doom 2099. Look at that reflection in there. Isn't that some great art? It sure is. Pat Broderick, really rocking it. And Doom 2099 was also written by John Francis Moore. And uh, yeah, I should actually pick up a couple more issues of Doom 2099. It was pretty good too. Uh, and look at that. There's our X-Men 2099. These are the characters we're going to be spending a little bit of time with today who I have just spent some time with on issue two and three. That's what we're going to talk about, but I want to give you the quick uh, review on this one. We've already talked about oh, Punisher 2099, Hulk 2099. These are just ads, by the way, for the other 2099 books. Crystalline can, you know, like create crystals, right? Pretty simple. There, uh, there he is. There's Bloodhawk doing the transformation, right? We just keep going. So then, uh, Mr. Singe is basically like melted into goop, and he and Lighten just can't believe it. Desdemona's stoked because she's just been wanting to get rid of her father for forever, I guess. And they assume that it was Zion with the with the creepy lizard hand who touched him and changed the molecular structure of his system. Zion gets up to give a big speech at Nuevo Soul. There's an assassin there that Junk Pile has let in. And you know, he pulls his he's talking, talking about how we need to form a new X-Men, right? And the the assassin shoots, but Tim Fitzgerald here. His mutant ability like kicks in. The dude can't control his mutant mutant ability. It only kicks in when he's like stressed out. And sure enough, uh, homeboy gets shot. I, I guess he bleeds white. That's that's fine with me. Uh, and then all hell breaks loose. Uh, the bad guys, you know, the enforcers uh, from the Greater Nevada Syndicate show up to basically arrest and kill everybody. And. That's kind of where we ended is like Zion is basically on death's door shot and he wants Tim to join the X-Men. He knew he would and Tim's just like X-Men. Why do you talk about the X-Men? This is 2099. X-Men are old news. So that is essentially like where X-Men 2099 number one ended. What we want to talk about, boom, X-Men 2099 number two. 
all hell's breaking loose. It basically picks up with them on the run uh, from the syndicate, going as fast as they can away from Nuevo Sol. They got Zion in the back. He's all crippled, and you know they're trying to save his life, but they can't quite—they can't quite do it. Not without you know the proper tools. Luckily, this diagnostic monitor should keep his vital signals stable until they can get to a real med center, which is basically where they're heading. In. And just bad guys show up. Uh, here's their little tiny, here's their little tiny van, and then like the giant tank shows up that's gonna blow the hell out of him. He, you know, he turns to gold because he's awesome. Such a cool-looking character. Um, Bloodhawk is actually a pretty interesting character too because he's not with the X-Men in 2099 but he keeps helping them so that's kind of fun. Here you see some very dynamic art from Mr. Ron Lim. I don't know if that is is the older brother, possibly the father of Tim Lim, the creator of Trump's Space Force. Check it out on Indiegogo. And she uses her stupid Reed Richards power, Serpentine does, to like stretch across and look out. Oh, like she couldn't see through the window? Like, get real. Can't stand her. And so anyway, so like, Bloodhawk saves the day in amazing fashion. Cliff's Notes. So basically, like, if you, if you don't know what this is, kids, you pick up one of these and it tells you the whole story of the Scarlet Letter in like 50 pages instead of 400 pages. It's a way to pretend you're smart. Um... So, you know, they have this conversation, and he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you guys, but I'm not joining your team, you know. But my debt's paid because they freed him in the last issue. He was a prisoner, and they freed him, and now he's, you know, paying him back. And then, you know, little Mr. Singe, Lighten shows up and talks to Junk Pile, and they talk about, you know, the father, and he's, you know, using, using his shrink. He's got this uh, ampule that... You know, he pushes the button and it injects him with this drug called Shriek. There's a lot of drugs involved in the year of 2099. Um, it's kind of like being alive in 2018 in America. So, uh, you know, the this is the assassin from the first issue, and he didn't get the job finished, and if you would have let me, I could have finished the job, and they have this big debate. And then the guy gets up, help me, sir, the pain. Oh, of course, and he just pushes him to his death, and you get a nice thwunk. Alexander Daigle in his NHL uniform. If you want to see him in his NHL uniform, you got to buy score trading cards. And he'll dress like a Mountie and he'll dress like a, a maybe a plumber, let's say. We'll say he's dressed like a fireman. He's dressed like a postal serviceman. He's dressed like a matador and he's dressed like a nurse. This is just in, in the 90s, this is just like funny. This isn't transgender activism. I don't want you to get confused, kids. I know that. Here in 2018, you can get confused because everyone's transgender. Um, but in 1990, this is just a guy being silly, dressing up like a girl. It used to be funny. Um, so anyways, we've got the Nellis Singe Memorial Gala. Ladies and gentlemen, it's tonight only in the Tsunami Grotto, the online hypermedia excitement of Celeste Amberlin and her nude Indigo Review. I would go to that. So, you know, basically they're having the funeral for old man Singe, Noah Singe, if you will. I love this guy shows up, and this is what he says to Lighten. Lighten, your father was a black-hearted desert rat who steamrolled anything and everyone in his path. I had great admiration for that man. Oh, I appreciate that, Frank. Now, uh, about me succeeding him on the syndicate board. And she just shows up with a gun. This is Desdemona, the daughter of Noah Singe, Lighten's sister. Oh, what's with this party? Y'all look like someone died. And everybody pulls out their guns, right? This kind of reminds me of Last Action Hero when they're at the funeral and everyone pulls out the guns, including the old grandmas. That was a pretty good part. Love that movie. I don't care if you don't like it or not. Tell me in the comments below if you're cool enough to like Last Action Hero. Let me know. If you're not, you don't get to leave any comments. And she's just like ready to party in this sexy dress with her sexy purple hair. Um, I don't want anyone to get confused. This is not an SJW. SJW's bodies do not look this good. Their hair is not flowing this long. And it would be blue instead of purple. Let's not get confused. So, uh, here's to you, Daddy, and the horse you rode in on. And she, like, throws the glass and it breaks. And then, like, the gun goes off and it shatters, like, this picture of him that's here. Face it, brother. Daddy's dead and you can't stop me from dancing on his grave. This is really good interaction between these two. I really enjoy it. 
So, you know, we have our, you know, future X-Men. They're not the X-Men yet. They will be. Uh, they're, you know, debating on where are we going to go? What are we going to do? What about Zion? Good Lord, I've never seen anything like that. So, the Assassin's Plasma Blast seems to have caused extensive upper thoracic injury. The shock to his system has triggered an unexpected facet of Zion's mutant biology. His body is generating a protective sheath of cuticle-like growth around the wound. So basically, a cocoon is developing around Homeboy here. And uh, we don't know what's going to happen or how to do it, but we've got to stop it. And the only way we're going to stop it is to go to the Noah Singe himself and figure out what happened. Did, did Zion use his creepy lizard hand to change the molecular structure in Noah Singe's body? We need to find out the proof. So they go here later. Retinal pattern verified employee CLX44411W Cole Wesley Allen. This is kind of weird to me. This is kind of creepy because this is when Wesley Allen Dodd was a child killer here in the Pacific Northwest from, from my home of Vancouver, Washington, to be specific, right across the bridge from Portland, Oregon. Wesley Allen Dodd murdered children, and they, we hung him. We hung the son of a bitch good, and he told us to hang him too. He said there was a monster inside of him and that we needed to hang him. Nowadays, nowadays they'd let him make a Disney movie. Okay, they wouldn't. They'd fire him right after they found out he was diddling kids. So anyways, but it's kind of creepy that, like, why would you choose Wesley Allen Cole? Like, it's one away from Wesley Allen Dodd. And what's even weirder is that uh, the Sandman, like the old-timey Sandman, not Crazy Dream Sandman from DC Comics, but the old-timey Sandman who wears the gas mask, his name was Wesley Dodd. So how weird is that? So anyways, they go to the mortuary, mortuary uh, and this is the eyeball of a guard that they're basically making use his retinal scan to open the doors. Very cool retinal scan, very futuristic, not like the red cordless phone that Stan Lee wrote in the Ravage 2099, which was fun. This is much more futuristic. Um, so, you know, they go inside to figure out what's going on, and sure enough, like, the cocoon is just starting to wrap around all of Zion's body now. And here comes Junk Pile, and this giant rumbler thinks he's, you know, the Batman or whatever. Um... And, you know, there's like Tim is, you know, having an emotional struggle, you know, with his powers and, you know, why he's there. He doesn't understand why he's there. He doesn't understand why Zion believed in him. None of that. He can't even control his power. And then the Rat Pack show up. And, oh, oh, this is an important part. So she feels like a grave ro ro robber doing this. Uh, and what they're doing is they're taking some DNA tissue so they can, like, sample it and try to figure out exactly. This is old man Noah Singe's, like, body was basically, like, embalmed on his own horse. Like, he kills his horse, he kills him, yeah, and he's killed, and, like, he's, I don't know, like, put on his horse, you know? Kind of a Gene Autry sort of a thing. Look it up. Look it up. Um, so they test it, and it turns out this tissue was dead before it was subjected to an accelerated decomposition process that simulates the effect of Zion's hand. There's our proof. Let me read that again. This tissue is dead before it was subjected to an accelerated decomposition process that simulates the effect of Zion's hand. There's our proof. That's our cue, boys. Raise the curtain and break the leg, and then the Rat Pack shows up. So basically what this is saying is that Noah Singe was not murdered by Zion's hand. He was murdered by something that simulates the effect of Zion's hand. So then the Rat Pack shows up, which is like this group of really stupid looking dudes led by Stan Lee with cybernetic hands. Goro wins. Fatality. And they get in this big fight, and I just hate all these stupid Rat Pack. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. They've got names like, uh, this is the Suicide King. This is the dealer. He throws like razor sharp uh, razor discs, diamond cut razor discs, which I am assuming is like he's the gambit of the future, I guess. And then you got uh, Mr. Mr. Electric, Mr. Entertainment. Excuse me, Mr. Entertainment. That is this guy's name. And he is dumb, but he does get a good line in here, which is your whole crystal voodoo trip, baby. It's beautiful, and I mean that. But it doesn't compare to the electrifying touch of Mr. Entertainment. And so she touches her on the arm and her arm goes numb. And that's like his power is to make people go numb. 
Oh, another stupid bullseye with Tom DeFalco. This big, I just, he's got some moves. Come on, Tom, when do I get a turn? Having this bathtub installed in the office was my idea. Come on, Tom, more ice. <laughs> so does that mean like he's so fat he sweats all the time and he wants to like be in a bathtub filled with ice? Why is the naked fat man in a bathtub in the middle of Marvel Comics? These are questions I have every time I see a stupid bullseye comic book. I hate this. This is the worst part of Marvel Comics. Why do they do this? Anyway. The evidence we found won't mean a thing if we can't get out of the casino complex. So they broke into this casino. They got everything. And now we got light in here. And this is actually, this is X-Men 2 right here. She puts up a crystal... Crystals? I don't know, a crystal wall? I don't know. This is, uh, maybe it's a crystal wall is the best way to describe this. Stupid twist. And Stan Lee's like, calm yourself, dealer. The skirt won't get far. And it just reminds me of X-Men 2 when, when Bobby puts up the, the ice wall so that Stryker can't get to Logan on the other side. That's what I think of. Sleep off that hangover, Des? <laughs> you made quite a scene at the wake. I could have charged admission. Why wasn't I informed the Rat Pack captured two of Zion's accomplices? I didn't think you were interested in casino affairs, doll. When Daddy was alive, I wasn't. But now I'm due half the estate. You bet I'm interested. You wouldn't be trying to suppress any suggestions Zion didn't kill Daddy, would you? Don't cross me, Des. Soon I'll be sitting on the syndicate executive board. And anyone in my way gets buried along with Zion and his mutant cronies. So then Junk Pile shows up and he beats a woman. You know he's a bad guy when he backhands a woman. Unacceptable, especially a hot dame like that. Oh, Clyde the Glide, baby. Let's get a self high five for those early 91, 92 Blazers. Oh, loved it, loved it. You know, they never won, but they had, they had a great series against the Chicago Bulls headline you know headed by michael jordan scotty pippen that's uh that's that's nba when it was great man nba was great clyde the glide drexler was the man terry porter kevin duckworth buck williams jerome kersey i love them all i love them all sorry i get excited whenever i see drex i don't make them like that anymore and then, you know, and then Serpentine jumps on him. Traitor, you were one of us. Grow up, girly girl. I was never one of you. And Tina, you know, because like, her name's Serpentina. We call her Tina for short. He, like, throws her and she hits the gun. If you've hurt her, boom. So, like, Tim Fitz, as they call him, blasts his arm off. And it doesn't matter. Not much meat. Oh, Lord, what have I done? Not much meat. See, my body's been rebuilding itself with scrap for years. So, like, the arm just grows back on, which is cool. Or reconnects this machine let's see if you can say the same and then, you know he's gonna beat him up and kill him he chokes him out basically throws him to the side opens it and zion's completely covered in this cuticle <laughs> growth is what they called it i would call it a a red cocoon um, you should have known people with messianic pretensions wind up crucified to be concluded and indeed, it is going to be concluded now. You know, I often wonder, like, what are these comic books worth? Because how many people actually took a wrapper and sent it in and got their comic book? These comics might be actually worth something just because I bet not a lot of people got them. And so how many were actually printed? How many actually went out? It's kind of an interesting. Is it an original story or is it a reprint of an old Avengers story? I've often wondered, too. You see these from time to time back then. I don't. I don't really see this anymore, you know? Usually it's like, you get the, the candy bar and it's just like, oh, enter this code online so that we can, you know, data mine you for your address and email. And you don't even get like, oh, you get a digital comic. Oh, a, a wallpaper for your digital desktop. It's like, what the hell? Like, get real, I want a comic book, damn it. Captain Crunch, <laughs> you can't get that crunch out of your head. Great comic. Turns out, I found number three, and one of the X-Men 2099 will die. 
And that did happen in this issue. And I don't want to give this all away because I'm telling you right now, this is a comic book that does move the needle. You are going to want to go to your comic shop, the good one in town that has all the back issue bins. You're going to want to pretend you're a little Chinese girl trying to win an Olympic gold medal. You're going to climb up on top of a ladder all the way, all the way to the high board. And then you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to dive down right into that comic book shop back issue bin and you're gonna, you're gonna swim, you're gonna swim, you're gonna swim until you find X-Men 2099 number, number one, number two, and number three and see if they do the trick for you because they are moving the needle for me, for sure. And I'm not gonna give away everything in this because this is the end of this story that, that was so wonderfully well written by John Francis Moore and Ron Lim was the artist. As you can tell, Ron Lim does a great job. I, I, I still have not confirmed if it's Tim Lim's dad from Trump Space Force available on Indiegogo, but it's possible. So we've got, you know, some great stuff going on, some more feud between the brother and sister. Uh, Crystalline is, is still like, she's basically like hiding in the rafters and in the air vents at the, at the hotel in Vegas. And here's my boy. He just, you know, Bloodhawk just flies in there and just kicks some serious butt. Here's David, uh, here's David Hasselhoff. Gets taken out by Fitz. There you get to see Serpentina's hand reach out and grab him and yank him back, which is fun. And they put on the suits, you know, classic, you know, it's like Luke and Luke and Han just putting on those stormtrooper outfits because that's how you do it. You know, everybody's still looking at like what's going on here. This is kind of interesting. Uh, Shock T's psi abilities can sense other mutants once she's in close proximity to them. And Mean Streak calls her Cerebra as a joke. You know, like Cerebro, Cerebra, because she can find them. Find them. Find all the mutants that are within close proximity. And sure enough, there's Zion, and he's got, oh, see? You see how it's working now, right? But, you know, this old junk pile is still trying to wait for the, wait for the butterfly to come out of there. You could win a Sonic spinball game. How about that? But you gotta eat lifesavers, so it's too bad for you. Miss Singe, we weren't expecting you. Mr. Junkpile brought the mutants here. Perhaps you should dis shouldn't disturb him. He's potentially dangerous. Ooh, I'm shaking, boys. So she just like pushes Junkpile out of the way and wants to know, you know, like what's going on? What made you give up your fellow outlaw, your fellow mutant, to someone like my brother? You ask a lot of questions, girl. I'm a woman who needs a lot of answers. Sounds like every woman I know. So let's you and I talk somewhere private. So like, then they find like this underground lab essentially. Um, and luckily they were only needed to take out the grunts and the, mid -tech, the med techs. There's no real threats. They find their friends like suspended in this, this gel which is a stasis gel to keep them alive. It deadens the nerves and slows the body's metabolic rate to a minimum. And she's like, give me a second and I'll open the door. And Serpentina is just like, forget it, I got this. And she just busts it open with a chair. So we get some like pro wrestling action here, getting busted open with the chair. Battle Masters, the epic game of fantasy battles. And this Board looks cool. This this is like the giant mega mat. It actually is four and a half feet by five feet. You put your guys down on it, your little castle on it. You wage war. It's like kind of like a risk sort of a game. Or, or if you have an emulator on your computer, check out Lords of the Realm 2. If you're into games like this, if you like Dungeons and Dragons, try Lords of the Realm 2. It is just as enjoyable as Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Lords of the Realm 2. Here's a Might and Magic 3. Check them both out. Check out Battle Masters if you can find it with the Mega Mat. So the, you know, it crash and the, you know, and all the goose spills out and, you know, like the friends are like, oh, I'm alive, but I'm numb. It feels like I took a bath in Novocaine. And she's like, yeah, who invented this stuff? And I think that Nickelodeon invented this slime, actually. I could be wrong. So no, Noah Singe here now. All of a sudden, here's Noah Singe, like still alive, but oh, it's just a, it's just a hologram. And he's like, "I'm cutting you out of the will, boy." And the boy's like, "I'm doing more drugs, Dad. Ha ha! You can't stop me. I'm turning off your hologram." Turns off the hologram. I kind of like this line here. 
she comes out and she like shoots the, because you know, Crystalline can shoot crystal stuff out of her body, so she makes like a crystal edged weapon. Now feel the sharp edge of instant karma pressing against your throat. Great line, John Francis Moore. Thank you, sir. And, uh, and the syndicate will be interested in hearing the truth about your father's death. They frown on patricide, no matter how justifiable. A crystalline, right? Aren't you supposed to be the compassionate member of Zion's little mutant mob? You don't deserve compassion. Ah! And then, you know, gets her. Junk Pog gets her. And, and Desdemona comes in, and we continue the, the sibling rivalry. Desdemona, get out of here, sis. No, Lighten. It's time I take charge. As much as I hate cleaning up your mess, we still have a band of mutants roaming the casino. Sure enough, those mutants are roaming. Zombies ate my neighbors by Konami. No, I don't know. I never played it. And then we get to like this weird. Oh, and they, Stan Lee and the Rat Pack shows back up. I call him Cyber Stan because of the hands. Cyber, Cyber Hand Stan. And then we get like. See, when I first got this, I thought it was going to be like. You can see that it's like. Maybe you can see that it's much larger than a normal comic. And I was like, ooh, it's like a double sized issue and they forgot to advertise it or something. But no, that's not actually what it is at all. It's an advertisement for. Punisher War Journal Suicide Run. And this is actually kind of some cool advertising for uh, Punisher Reg, in my opinion. So cool advertising. Really cool. It will be nice to see Maria and the children again. So basically, Punisher's like figures he's going to die after whatever he's doing here. Juice. I don't know if this is juice. I don't know what juice is. This issue, The New Warriors, is this a comic book coming out in November of 1993? Is this juice or is this like a New Warriors chick? I was never into The New Warriors chick. Uh, I, I do think that Night Thrasher does look cool uh, for the most part. I think maybe you could use a little update with the visor nowadays. Back then he looked hot. She looks really interesting though to me. I find this character very interesting to look at. So not because she's a girl, because she's interesting. And then we've got Nova doing some stuff. And this is basically just like uh, advertisements for why you should buy the new Warriors. I did not read any of it. This is some nice art of Namorita. Uh, and you get a $5 coupon for KB Toys. You know, you can get a free Ghost Rider comic. Here it is. You get this free Ghost Rider comic when you buy a, a Nintendo or a Sega Genesis game. I would recommend if you're going to pick up one, try a Super Fighter 2, Street Fighter, try Street Fighter 2 Turbo Edition. That's just my opinion. And here we go. Uh, now, Tim, you know, who can't control his mutant powers, right? You remember that. You can do more than you know. You just need to push. And she just, like, touches him on the back of the head. And he's like, oh. And Cyber Stan is like, showtime, boys. Don't worry about the kid. He's too wet behind the ears to do us any. And he just blows out, like, the entire wall. Destroyed. Look at all the rocks fly. These guys are toast. And, uh, and he's just like, wow, did I do that? And she tells him, your power operates as a basic animal response to stress and danger. Not being a higher brain function, I can trigger the reaction psionically. <laughs> you were great, Fitz. The Rat Pack didn't know what hit him. Well done, brother. And like, like, so like, basically, look at this. So he has destroyed this room, knocked these guys unconscious, left them disheveled. But look, uh, their little device here is perfectly fine. It managed to survive this massive explosion. How lucky. All of a sudden, like, you know, we've got Zion, who's in his his pod, his protective cocoon. Crack. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Something's going to shatter here. Things are changing. And they run to the Singe Medical Laboratory, and the doors slide open, and there's Crystalline. But, oh, no! It's actually Junk Pile! There he is again. And he grabs Tina by her head. She's, like, she cannot control her toxic femininity. She is constantly trying to fight men. She's constantly just a victim of her own emotions. He grabs her by the head and he smashes her head first right into the wall. Tina, are you? She's not moving. No. You killed Tina! Timothy, no! And like they have like the fight and then like, you know, or no, excuse me, he he hits him and throws him like basically through a window. So Tim is just like a puss cake. He cannot fight Junk Pile because Junk Pile is on the juice. And not, just so we're clear, I'm not talking about. I'm 
I'm not talking about this kind of juice. I'm talking about I'm talking about steroids. Steroids for guys who are robots, ro roboroids. That's an 18 floor drop. Oh, when meat finally hits the pavement, it's gonna make a real ugly noise. I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. No, you're not dead. You are alive, thanks to Bloodhawk. And Bloodhawk comes in and he kicks some ass. Junkpile grabs his wing and just, just snaps it. I love this art. Thank you, Ron Lim, for another great piece of art here. And just cracks, just, yeah, breaks it, breaks it. And they all get ready to fight, and all of a sudden, Zion shows back up, and he's got his hands bandaged really bad. It's like burn victim thing going on here. Um, or, this is kind of like, Rocky? Like, didn't he like, wrap his hands up like that and start punching meat? Maybe I'm crazy, but I think that that's what that is. Zion just like flips over him, and then touches him, and and that's it, you know, because that's what disrupts the molecular structure of anyone's body or anything he touches. So Junk Pile's in big trouble, falls, and it's just like, oh no, oh no. And it's like, he, he, you know, he's gotta kill him. Zion's like, no, you will, you will reconstruct your soul and return as a friend and ally. Never, uh, and he passes out. I don't know how robots pass out, but I guess they do. You gotta be kidding, you can't forgive Junk Pile. He set you up for Singe's assassination. He murdered Tina. Uh, the boy is right. You should have killed him. He's like, no, no, no. Much like I once was, Junk Pile is fueled by hatred and driven by power. But the possibility for unexpected and transcendent change exists in us all. Witness my transformation from destroyer to healer. So he's got one hand that can kill anything, and now he has this other hand that heals, and it just like heals... He has the wing, right? Like that. Like it's like it's nothing. And that's amazing. What a great power. But he cannot save Tina. I can heal the living, but I cannot raise the dead. No one ever said life was fair. And then, you know, it's Desdemona and she's got her guards. And it's just like, we're going to fight. And she's like, no, no, it's fine. The casino's under new management. I know Lighten killed Daddy and set you up. After all, who thought some mutant... New after all, who thought some mutant nomads would be so much trouble? And your brother? I locked him up in isolation. If he doesn't die from shriek withdrawal, he'll face a syndicate tribunal. And I hate this part right here, just to be honest, because this was one of my favorite parts of this comic was the sibling rivalry between Desdemona and Light and Singe. And now it's been resolved off camera. It's been resolved uh, and we were not privy to it, and that's unfortunate. And so all I get to do is be excited because there's Clyde again. And but ultimately disappointed here. This is not great storytelling. This is this is kind of a Deus Ex Machina. And that makes me sad. It makes me very sad. But anyway. Life continues, they bury Tina, and it's time for our new adventure to start. And you know. And Bloodhawk's like, Zion, I mourn your loss, but I cannot stand among you. Our responsibility is to the land. His, his responsibility is to the land? I don't... Was he a farmer before? I don't know. We don't know his origin. Understood, you are always welcome with us, Hawk. Anyway, so in the end, I offer no assurances that Tina will be the only one of us to fall. Together, we begin the fight to claim our heritage and create our future. We are X-Men, and we will set the world on fire. Guess if you're going to set the world on fire? I thought you were going to save the world. Maybe, maybe the world's so bad it has to be set on fire. I don't know. But anyways, so this is the end of the first story arc here, issues number one, two, and three. But then they add this little tag at the end that hooks you in and makes you want to buy issue number four. Elsewhere. Oh, my children. How entrancing is your sonata of suffering, as you writhe in agony, be heartened that your pain serves a higher cause, that of art. So they're all being tortured for art. So basically, this is Mark Wade, and these are all the Comics Gate artists. Here, see this? This is Mitch Breitweiser. He's being forced to read crappy comics. This is Ethan. He's screaming in, in outrage because he's been called a Nazi every day for a year. Here's Brett R. Smith. 
Uh, he is forced to endure stupid tweets every single day from SJWs. And here's Tim Lim crying because everyone calls him a Nazi because he voted for Donald Trump. And, you know, Mark Wade is just making them suffer for their art. And that's how it goes. Incoming message, project full size. Brimstone Love. His name is Brimstone Love? That's a great name for a male stripper. To what do I owe the honor of the theater's most distinguished member? Sarcasm is a dangerous weapon to wield, 13. My apologies. An intriguing mutant phenomenon has emerged in your district. I suggest you investigate and explore what new entertainment it may offer the theater. As you wish. Luna, come, come. A new game begins, and here's Luna Goering and from the darkness. Whoever Luna is, whoever this is, we think it's Mark Wade. We're not sure. I don't know. This is, is, this, is this Tom DeFalco? Is this Ron Mars? Is, is this Patches? Is, who is this? Who is, who is Brimstone Love? But nonetheless, this makes me want to buy issue number four of X-Men 2099. We got a splat. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. Um, did I read? No, I didn't read. This is the Fall of the Hammer 2099 crossover. That is not drawing me in, man. It's like every piece of art they put out for 2099 didn't do anything for me, but I pick up a con- Oh! RoboCop 3. Thanks, Frank Miller, for writing that piece of shit. So anyways, there we go. X-Men. 2099, one, two, and three. Pick them up. Pick up four, five, and six. Pick up seven, eight, nine. See if they're good too. I'm going to, because I had a good time reading this. Thanks to, thanks to great writing by John Francis Moore and impeccable art by Ron Lim and stellar inker Adam Kubert. So, if this motivated you to pick up a 2099 book, let me know in the comments below. Let me know which which of the X-Men 2099, if you loved X-Men 2099, which one of these guys is your favorite? I'm I'm really on, I'm really about this guy, basically. This is my favorite guy. And then probably her, and then Zion. And, and you know, I I mean, the, all the others are okay. I'm so glad she died though. I'm so glad Super Serpentina died cuz she was stupid. So, those are comic books that moved the needle for me this beautiful day, and I hope they move the needle for you. Please subscribe. Please like this video. It helps, folks. It really helps encourage me to keep on going. And I hope all of you keep on keeping on. And we're going to be back with more comic reviews right here on what? Testosterone Overload!